Hi guys, welcome back. It's Nick here with another episode of the Transport Game in Unity 5 series. We're up to episode 29 and this time around I'm going to finish off the station code, uh, which I think you guys must be looking forward to by now because it's taken a bit longer than I originally thought. Uh, so last time there's not much to see really in game. Uh, all we can see is we're getting coal generated by a factory. Um, but what I want to do is get these stations picking up that coal and transferring it across. So, without further ado, let's dive straight in. Where we left off, we were looking at this uh, update storage list. So last time I actually made a slight mistake here. I was missing out a loop. So what we also need to do is add an intermediary loop right here, saying with the variable k as our counter. Uh, and that's going to iterate over the items list that we just got previously. So do items.length k++. And then the actual item we want to pass in is items at k. So now that we've got that, we can actually fill in this little bit of magic in the middle, which means remove it from the previous one and add it to the new one. So we have to do our adding first. It's going to be mstorage.addItem. And the item is going to be items k, and then we're going to do m watch list dot remove. Uh, which one do we need? Sorry, m watch list at i dot remove and call remove item, uh, and this also takes some items. So I'll do items at k. There we go. So now we've done that, we can check to see if that works. Uh, but before we check that, we have to fill in this uh, can, can transport item function. Now I'd filled it in over here as return false. I'm actually going to change that to be return true, which means no matter what the item is, we're always going to be able to transport it. And the final thing I'm just going to do before we jump back into the testing is in the storage script. Where we have our debugging, which is up here, I'm going to add an extra bit which debugs out the name of the object that the storage belongs to, which is going to be this. So that should be enough to get us started. See that compiles fine. Let's see what happens. So the factory and the station initialize to zero, which is fine. The factory gets some coal, ah, but we see the factory is getting some coal, but the station is never picking up on the fact there is coal there. And that's because we're only calling update storage list every time uh, a route is added. So what we want to do is call update storage list every time the storage list is updated. Uh, so to do this, we need to track when the storage list is updated. And I'm going to do this via an event. So I'm going to make it a public unity event and oops, that could just be unity event. I'm going to call it on storage changed event. Uh, the reason that's giving an error is because we need to add an import for this. Uh, this is the one using unity engine dot events. Uh, and we want to call this whenever our storage changes. So when we add an item, we want to do storage change event dot uh, invoke down here and also when we remove items essentially anytime we'd normally call debug storage when the storage system changes we now want to do a event as well so an event is just a, a variable and it stores off a list of people who want to find out when something has changed uh, previously when we did the camera script we did it via a different method but the unity event system is actually a lot more robust so we're going to use that for for this uh, this different method I might go back and change the camera system later but we'll see how we go with that so what's left to do is on our station is when we register a storage item we want to say new storage what on storage changed event and then what we can do is just add a listener and a listener is just a function to call when the event is uh, when the event is called, so I'm going to put in add storage list. Then in the remove event, we're going to say new storage this one dot uh, 
uh, on storage changed event and just make sure we remove the listener update storage list. So this should uh, call through to update storage list every time the storage is changed. So let's see if that compiles okay. Okay, so we've got a factory, get the coal. Still not getting that event through though. Two thousand years later. Okay, so I found out what the problem was. Uh, it's just in our station, we never actually added any routes. So just on the start of play, I'm just going to make one up just for the purpose of testing. Uh, I'm just going to make up a new root class. I think it's just going to be a root. Just pass in new root like that, uh, and that should be enough for now, just to make it tick along. And we'll just see what the debug shows. So we've got a factory, and then the station also receives the update and removes it from the factory, which is what we'd like to see. So it's brilliant. The station is slowly ticking up and saying, here's 60 coal, which is taken from the factory. So I'll just show you something else I did while I was uh, debugging that. So in the storage script, all I've done is, at the start of play, I've added a new listener onto the storage changed event, which is debug storage. Um, and then instead of calling that at the end of each one, I can just delete the function called debug storage and use the event instead to handle that. Just keeps things nice and clean and consistent. And if you wanted to disable debugging, you just have to remove that one line and you've done it. So uh, one thing I want to change with this storage script, uh, just because it's already getting a bit confusing and unmanageable, is the way that it operates with multiple items. Uh, so you see we've got a big long list of none items uh, and it's only when we start getting items we have to keep shuffling them around and it's really confusing and sort of unnecessary. So what I'd like to change this over to do is uh, be a generic list like we've used in our station like this. So I'm just going to do that quickly now. So items will now be a list of items. And I'll just import that using the fixes. So it's importing collections.generic. I'm going to remove, uh, well, actually, I'll leave that in for now because if I remove it, it's going to break our data set. So we'll, we'll leave that so our factory still work. Um, so I'll just update the initialization. So it's going to be a new list. Now this list won't have a max storage size, so for the time being I'm going to delete that. And I'm also going to delete number of free items. Again, to keep this nice and uh, simple to read and to use. So in add item, we can delete all these. We want to just check to see if we have some of this item. So we'll just call get item anyway, which still works fine. But instead of finding free space to create a new item, all we have to do instead is say items add and then pass in the new item. That's all we have to do. So we're now getting this error down here saying we can't modify the return type of items. I believe this is to do with the fact that items is a struct. So I'm actually going to change items to be the same as our root we can just make that an object. Uh, so I'm just going to turn that into a class. So it's going to be public class item. And that should be enough to get us going. So now we can modify that return type. Get item, instead of searching through the whole list, we can just say uh, we can search through the items.count and then return it. Remove item. Instead of doing all this uh, weird swapping things, we can just say, first of all, get the item. So we'll say int index equals get item of item.type. So we'll find out if we have got some of that item. Then we'll say if items at index. Count is greater than item dot count, and just reduce the count. Now 
otherwise we'll just delete the item entirely which is just a matter of saying items dot remove at and then pass in that index the only other thing left to do here is just to check to see if that index is minus one then don't do anything because we don't have the item anyway so that's all we need to do for remove find free item slot is now obsolete so we can delete that get item count of a certain type so we'll get the item and then return the count that's still fine get items uh, so this should also return a generic list so I'm going to change the return type of this to be a list uh, and I'm just going to return items like that so at some point I might change this into a getter function but for now I'm just going to leave it like this so in station we're going to have an error here because now items is a generic list so I'm just a matter of changing over some of these values so this is now list count and we no longer have to pass by reference which is brilliant because items is a class rather than a struct so hopefully that's caught all of our errors there yep seem to be let's check if unity agrees with it nope it does not name at max storage size does not exist okay so our debugging is now wrong so we need to go up to items dot count um, to see what effect this has had so in our debugging we should see a, a display that is a lot simpler so zero items then coal then 40 coal 80 coal as the station ticks up so this all works fine um, but there are still a few problems with this so our factory should in theory be producing uh, more items so with the coal it can be making uh, stone which is no longer doing so there's some thought to be put into this and I think the way I'm going to do this for future reference but not now is change these uh, stations so that they all use a single shared storage uh, and the way that will be achieved is by having redundant storages on the factories uh, so the factory will just speak to the station uh, unless it doesn't have a station in which case it will use its own so I'm just going to quickly implement that actually because I don't think that's going to be too difficult to make so we've got our local station I think all we have to do is say at the start of play we'll check local station for null pointer so if it equals null just check if it's not equal to null and if that's the case we'll replace ourselves with the actual station item so this might make what we've done a little bit obsolete but I think it'll make the game better uh, so I'm just going to do this and then if it's not better I'll go back to the system we just made otherwise we'll move forward with this system so instead I'm going to say m storage instead of being the one on ourselves if we've got a station we want to say is equal to the local station and get the storage from them so now when we're making items we're just going to put the items straight into the station uh, and if there's anything else using it we can keep popping them in and out which should work okay so let's just check to see if that works and see how that plays out so the factory storage items would actually be redundant they just sit there and do nothing which might work out for us okay so we've definitely got some bugs there straight away there's a ton of coal in there and a ton of wood uh, the factory is cl clearly producing a lot of stuff uh, straight off the bat let's just see why that might be okay it seems like when we changed our items though to be a class this uh, this whole section got messed up so I think coal was uh, I think it was 20 actually 20 on coal 10 on stone five on wood I'm really not sure these counts got uh, really screwed up uh, so we'll just make sure that's uh, still working okay so we had a coal which got to stone which got turned to wood so yeah this seems to be function correctly so we're slowly producing wood over time uh, and if we increase the requirements here so say uh, you require 
100 coal to make stone and then 100 stone to make wood then that's going to completely unbalance our factory which is fine that's that's the way we wanted it to behave so we get the coal and it waits until we get 100 before we get wood there we go brilliant so i think that's about it for this episode we've actually implemented our station system i know it's a bit weird because we implemented one sec system and moved on to another i think in the next episode we're going to move on to doing uh, actual item transportation so we're going to make a little car or something like that to transport items between stations uh, the next episode is going to be slightly delayed because it's the holiday season so i'm going to take a break for a week and then come back with a new video in two weeks time so until then thank you very much for watching and i hope you have a very happy holiday season and i'll see you in the next video bye